Hey guys, welcome back to the last episode of Season 3. What a year it has been. So many lads, so many great yarns. It's been awesome being able to share the journey of some of these champion lads with you all. And a massive thank you to you guys for tuning in. I'm not exactly sure what Season 4 is going to look like, but I can assure you that What a Lad will be continuing in some form. Also, a massive thank you to all the sponsors for the season. It has kept this podcast going. And if you do want to support the podcast for maybe Season 4, then please get in touch. There's plenty of ways um, you can support the podcast, so um, reach out and we can make something work. Speaking of sponsors, it's been awesome to have Hayden from EQS sponsor the podcast Now, many suggest this lad is the best registered quantity survey on the planet. So if you're looking to build, renovate your existing home or looking at a commercial development, look no further than Hayden. EQS is based in Palmerston North, but they work throughout New Zealand. They can provide estimates from concept plans through to the final designs. So if you're interested, please contact Hayden and all the information to get in touch with him is below. Speaking of lads... Timmy Bateman from O Studio. Now, he is such a good lad that he's even got an early Christmas present for you all. Have a listen to this. Jimmy, Tim Bateman here from O Studio, mate. It's great seeing you around the studio getting involved, so we've decided to give your listeners another promo code to give it a crack to. All they need to do is enter What A Lad Class, all in capitals and no spaces, when purchasing a drop-in class, which is yoga or pilates, at the checkout online to get 100% off the class. Yep, that's a free class. As always, if anyone is interested in opening your own O Studio around New Zealand or abroad, get in touch at ostudio.co.nz forward slash lad. We'd love to hear from you. The next O Studio in Rolleston is opening in early 2023, which is super exciting, and we're currently looking at other locations around New Zealand too. All the best, and back to the show. Uh, What a lad, well just like that we've come to the end of season three and as always I try and finish the season on a high with one of the best lads possible and for this one I've got him, the gifted singer, actor, rugby player and coach has done it all in his eventful career to date which has seen him play for the Hurricanes, the Highlanders, the Blues, Rebels, Wellington Lions, Otago, Rico Black Rams, New Zealand Maldives, Junior All Blacks, New Zealand Sevens and of course the mighty All Blacks. And since becoming a coach, he's guided the Crusaders to two titles and the Wellington Lions to one. And on top of all that, he's a father of soon-to-be six and a massive, massive lad. He is one of the greats. It is the one and only Tumbody Allison. Welcome, bro. Hey, kia ora. Thanks for having me on. Mate, I reckon that's my biggest intro yet, mate. You've done it all. And I didn't even mention your (laughs) jiu-jitsu. Yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be a very long list. Um, (laughs) That's been cool, be very lucky up to this stage for sure. Mate, and how did you get into Jiu-Jitsu? Because you're, you're coaching it well at the moment. I'm unsure when I, when I first started. Um, and, and I haven't done a lot, but I've, I've done enough, I think, for to be able to put it into footy. And, yeah. Um, to, probably towards the end of my career, I just enjoyed doing something other than weights. Mm. But uh, yeah, come to understand it's, an, it's a great sport. Uh, my kids all started rolling when we were living in Melbourne. They were there um, with Ben Hall, and then also at Axis Jiu Jitsu in um, in Tokyo as well. So true. Um, it's it's a great sport, yeah. Mate, it does cross over well, and you do coach it well, eh? But um, obviously, you're getting the reps in at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, I think a lot of things you, we assume that the players understand certain things and. Um, to get in and, and feel a few, uh, especially with the tackling and the collision stuff, mm. is um, you think about a jiu-jitsu um, black belt or or, or, an, or an instructor, he's not actually just walking around. Mm. He's he's good enough to be to hold that belt, and he gets around and rolls as um, as he teaches. And I, I've always liked that as a coaching method, especially as a young coach, mm. um, to, to be able to uh, still feel a few. Mm. And speaking of coaching, you're just off the back of a. Um, very successful season with Wellington, guiding them to not only the championship but um, also the Ranfurly Shield. Um, what was that year like for you? It was good. It was uh, really enjoyable. I think we keep it really simple. Uh, we we try to focus more about ourselves, our footy, and, and our journey. And um, regardless of the results, I think we, we did that part well. Mm. Um, and then the results followed. So I, I really enjoyed it. We had a good group. 
we had some we had some leaders, some All Blacks that were were back with us for that period, and they were motivated. So it's it's always um, it's easier when your your good players uh, want want to continue to be great, and and everyone else follows. So it was cool. It was a really enjoyable year. Had a, had some young boys coming through, you know, like young Peter Larkai there, Siali Lawaki, um, Riley Higgins, some twenties mm. boys that are coming through, and it will be good for the area. Mm. And obviously, you speak about that experience, guys like TJ in really important positions, Jackson Garden Bishop, massive roles for you guys that year. Eh? Yeah, they were, and we probably put a little bit more pressure on them this year than in the past. And the thing with TJ is that he um, he thrives off that mm. um, challenge, and and I think it it made his leadership uh, better. And and having him in the group um, because of the standards that. You know, we asked, and the standards that he he likes to set, the the rest were, were forced to follow. So, mm. um, the same with the bus. Jules has been awesome. He's been back mm. um, you know, three years now, and again, having a, a true professional who's done it all in the environment is just great. So, having for those guys, especially, you can't really put a price on it. Eh? That that leadership and that experience. Um, people often talk about it, but you don't really understand how important it is until you see it out there. Eh? Yeah, yeah. I keep telling my coaches that until I finally. <laughs> Got let go, um, and for, for when you're from the area, you know Jules is Strathmore boy, and and um, Tej and Jacko are Potty Door boys, so they're, they're you know from the area. They play club footy there, mm. um, so they, it's easy for them to care. So mm. the, the the experience as well as um, you know a, a, a want to lift the jersey is you know was a good great combination. Mm. And now you're down here in Christchurch, about to go into your third Super Rugby campaign. Um, you obviously moved down without your family though, so how hard's that? Um, you'd have to ask my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for you. Yeah, I'm just Netflix <laughs> after training. <laughs> no, nah, it's it's a choice, you know. We we make sure we discuss it and and try and work out what's best for um, the Fano. Like mm. my oldest boys started St Pat's Town this year, and we wanted to make sure we had enough support there on the ground. We both sets of grandparents and you know multi Polynesian family, so we're really tight anyway. Uh, but you just wanted the the habits and to be as consistent for the kids um, as possible, and mm. um, yeah, we another baby on the way. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely just me down here. Uh, but there's there's plenty of work anyway. So you you finish your days and you just keep keep ploughing and making sure you you're, you're prepping. And therefore, the times I get to go home, I'm I'm home. You know, mm. so getting better at that balance. Mate, your wife must be an absolute champion. Eh? Like, it's not just one, one, two kids, it's five kids and one on the way, so pregnant with five other kids to to look after. It's a, it's a hell of a job. Yeah, yeah, no, she does a, um, a great job and, yeah, it's it's one of those ones, you know, like in, in the business that we're in with footy, you get accolades and you get people uh, pats on the back and jerseys to hang, but we probably in society under underappreciate the, the hard work that goes on literally behind the scenes at home and, mm. and how consistent and that's real no days off um, yeah. hashtag you know um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah she, she's a um, superstar right and yeah she wanted another one and you delivered another one <laughs> <laughs> is that you done six surely or it was me done at five um, <laughs> uh, but I'm yeah grateful uh, yeah um, no it's, it's again it, it reshapes you you know and and you, you change what your year might have looked like, but for the better. So mm. that's cool. We're looking forward to it. Does it get easier? One's life changing, really, isn't it? And then two, you know, they all. I'm at three, but they've all sort of got a little bit easier. But they've had their yeah. patches. I, I think we understand as parents, you know, like um, you get your first kid, and it's everything's organic, and like she wanted me to literally grow strawberries, you know. And I, <laughs> I haven't really got much of that skill, as you would have seen. Like most actors, don't grow strawberries. <laughs> and um, to now, you know, like you're eating plastic off the floor, so yeah. <laughs> uh, you definitely grow your um, your rules. <laughs> That's so true, though. <laughs> and sleep and all those things. Eh? first one, you're so structured, trying to nail it, but yeah, it doesn't really work. Yeah, it's cool though. Like the they definitely look up to their older brothers and sisters, and I try to change my um my baby the other one time this year she's three and uh, see if she want to hand with her pajamas and she's like looking at me like yeah she you know took them off went in the bathroom showered herself changed herself brushing her teeth put stuck her toothbrush on the sure. mirror done her mouthwash like while she's buttoning up her shit still looking at me yeah it's kind of like whoa but 
Um, <laughs> I need to get my three year old around to your house. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's training, you know. And if again, if you're forced to, if you don't have that many mm, hands, because mm. um, my oldest son loves PlayStation, so he hasn't been helping my hopes mow the lawn today. <laughs> uh, they're, they're just forced to, you know. And yeah, it's it's cool though. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned your um, acting and your childhood acting stage, so we'll, we'll go there. What well, obviously growing up, um, not everyone grows up as a famous child actor, but what was your childhood like? Uh, yeah, so it was me, Macaulay Culkin, and Drew, and Drew <laughs> Nemia from um, uh, New Zealand's Got Talent. It was, nah, it, it's inter- it's, it was quite cool like to have a look at that industry. Mm-hmm. Um, when did you decide to get into it? Like, how I, old didn't, you? I didn't. I think mum and dad ran out of money and they needed some <laughs> Come moldy, on, moldy kids uh, in, um, I think it was called Coat Hanger, the local management agency. Oh, yeah. So um, my brother and I went there and... Uh, you know, that was probably in the dollar hucker days and um yeah, you know, we ripped in and um you yeah, got a few roles and, and they were cool, good you know, like well paid and Yeah. But I you know, realized pretty quick I had the patience to wait all day for your one minute part, then wait mm. all day again. But I realized pretty early that it wasn't gonna be for me. Mm. Like uh like I do enough acting <laughs> as it is. <laughs> I don't actually need it. And and yeah, you know, like my own characters. You kind of yeah. when you're doing that, you're having to be someone else's yeah. and be the way they think it should be. So, mm. um, yeah. But it was, it was as I said, it was a cool experience and cool to have a look at it. Yeah. What age were you when you first went in? Um, I think they caught me at nine. Oh, um, yeah. I were you it, nine when you did that? Did that ad? Nah, ten, I think. True. Oh, yeah, yeah. you look younger. Yeah. Um, probably just good skincare. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. It peaked that Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Um, what was that role? Um, spinning the wheel. I think I was on with Frank Bunce and Nick from Shortland Street. <laughs> um, but I knew once I hit Celebrity Wheel of Fortune that um, that was probably going to be the peak. <laughs> and then what was it like doing that ad? Obviously, uh, you're pretty famous for that, Stand By Me. Uh, were you always a singer? Were you comfortable singing in front of a camera with all blacks uh, watching? What was the setup nah, like? My point of difference was my dancing. Oh, yeah. Um, so th- that's probably what got me over the line. And when we went to the studio to record the singing, like I think the music guy was like, man. <laughs> um, so, so that was a big old day of auto tune. And, <laughs> and um, I hope it was my voice. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, funny how that works. But uh, nah, I just it was cool. Like back then with the All Blacks, you got, you're a, you're a fan. Mm. Maybe not in the way you're a fan now. You know, like I saw them and kind of buzzing. You're a kid and like fame and notoriety, whatever. It's probably changed a wee bit nowadays. Mm. Um, but at the time, yeah, it was cool. It was cool to meet meet all those guys. And you must have been a, like confident as kid to be able to get up there. Um, in front of TV cameras and sing like me at that age, I couldn't think of anything worse. You know, even like speeches in front of your class were like a nightmare. But yeah, you obviously had that confidence in you. I we I think we were trained like um, I went to um, Rui Apirahama was one of my uh, teachers, and he was a he was a singer, you know, actor. So South Side of Bombay, What's the Time, Mr. Wolf. Mm. So we we would do a lot of fai kōrero and a lot of pepeha and preparing as kids. And when you're young and you just feel like well, that's what everyone's doing. Mm. You just go around the classroom, you know, maunga, mm. awa, iwi, and you're doing that often. You're having karakia, so you're standing up and leading and speaking. Fai kōrero, same thing. Uh, so potentially was just training. And so when you stood up in other places that you didn't really think about it, mm. oh, I'm like anyone, I get in front of a big crowd or a wrong crowd, I don't really know what I'm doing or I'm making up the D stuff. You get a wee bit nervous. Mm. Uh, but I think that's probably where it come from, yeah. Would you be confident to do it now? More confident now than when you were? Like, would you sing Stand now? By Me? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> nah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have been doing singing lessons, eh? Like, you you do have a good voice now. Probably better than you did when you were at that age. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I'm running out of tricks for Ray and I've <laughs> been doing karaoke like set ups in the morning to get the energy going. And he said Friday's a big one, so um, I better make sure I know uh, <laughs> the lyrics for that. And I can, um, yeah, hopefully like Shaggy Bombastic or something. Like, <laughs> is it called Baritone? What would what, Vic DeVito would know? <laughs> so when did you decide that acting wasn't you? You said it, you didn't quite feel like uh, it was what you wanted to do. Did you have an option to pursue it? Um, you, you do because you 
you kind of, uh, I don't know what they call it, with the agency, you kind of go and, I don't know, take classes or take new pictures. Mm. And I don't think my teenage years were good to me, you know, with the acne. <laughs> so it's pretty, pretty limiting. Um, appreciate my wife for, for, for trusting that I'd get through that <laughs> in, in the early days. Is that uh, literally how it dried up? Did you feel, did you feel like <laughs> no, pressure from acne? No, 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 <laughs> no, I don't. And no, oh. definitely not. It was, uh, no, I just, I didn't do it for, for a few years and yeah. kind of got sick of it after a while, yeah. Mm. And was rugby always like another dream of yours? Was that, was that always the goal? No, nah, no, nah, that wasn't either. Um, I enjoy playing mm. um, as, as much as the next person. If you make a rep team when you're younger, again, that's it's cool. But I didn't really, probably towards the end of college, like when you're in college, and I went to Mana College, a small school, um, same as TJ, mm. and we were like in the third division and, um, you know, we had limited numbers and stuff So I reckon probably towards the end of My last year at college I was like oh I'm going to give this a good crack once I leave So club rugby through Norths Helped me in that first year To, to yes start having a decent go And uh, I played for New Zealand under 19s The year after that uh, So I was young coming out of school And I think once I made a New Zealand side That was my first New Zealand side Because I hadn't played Wellington secondary school reps Or anything like that True. I, I kind of worked out I worked really hard for a good year and a bit just by myself and mm. I, I made it in that side and I was kind of like, oh man, a bit of an aha moment, mm. work hard, it helps. And yeah. yeah. So what was that flick of the switch that made you think, shit, I'm going to give this a go? You know, I, I Honestly, like looking back now, I feel because of our first 15 and because of our school, like in the younger grades, I might have played a few reps, mm. but we weren't in those positions. So it was hard for any coach to come to third division and, um, you know, we had some 23 year old uncles playing as well. So, um, it, it, it was hard. And I, I just felt like some of my mates that went to town schools and they played for rep sides, I felt, oh, okay, I used them as a bit of a reference that they've made these teams. I might be able to have a crack as well. And so there was a wee bit of like chip on my shoulder having come from Porirua and, mm. and, and wanting to, um, give it a real crack. And when you made that New Zealand 19s team, did you feel like you were good enough? Nah, no, nah, I like, that was a good thing. I went in there going, oh, man, what a buzz. But the formula since then has always been the same for me, just working hard and mm. you know, even if you're in a team for a longer period. And the good thing is I never really um, had enough talent, mm. so you're forced to work. But it's actually the, the way you find out what you're about, you know. So mm. you know, I, th- I feel like now sometimes talent, especially when it's congested in, in top schools or top areas and people can rely on that and – and it serves you for a long period, but if you haven't had tests or multiple tests, you, you don't have. She have resilience. You don't have a. It's not resilience. You mm. just you've never been, you know, run around before yeah. or tackled. You just used to run through everyone. And mm. If you never had that, it's um, you know, and then that comes late, or you avoid that. You get a little bit older, and it's like, man, yeah, it's going to hit you at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's interesting. And then you obviously went into the Wellington Lions at a pretty young age too. Um, pretty intimidating environment, was it? Um, not not really. Like Peter Alatini, um, Alo used to pick me up. So this was funny. He, he was an all-black midfielder at the time, mm-hmm. and, and he was at Norse and Porirua. And I obviously no car to get to training, so he used to come and scoop me up. And oh, true. Yeah, it was, it was cool. And looking back now, it's like, man. You know, I'm in there going far out. <laughs> and then a couple of mornings, my mum, she's like, oh, can I get a ride as well? I'm like, oh, my God. In the back. Mum. She's like, oh, so I'm in the back and she's yarning to Allah. Um, <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, man, what are you doing? Um, you know, next day it's dad, his mate, and, yeah. and Allah's driving people all over the door. <laughs> no, but I, I think that was cool because, one, you realised, um, yeah, he's, he's the all-black midfielder at the time, just signed for Wellington and – and the kind of person he was, mm. so you kind of re- you worked out pretty quick that man, you can still be that guy, mm. you know. And um, some people, uh, you know, can and some people can't. But Allah was awesome, so I kind of, you know, I had a, you know, I could work hard, but also try and try and be the best kind of person. Mm. And how long did it take before you got a crack or your debut at that level? Um, it's funny because like I was in the like. Um, like in and around the squad, you know, academy back then it wasn't that big. So you're, you're lifting weights with like Cully and Jonah and those guys all at the gym. You're just like, man, yeah. fire out. 
Um, it was good though, though, you know, they're all cool again, you know, in, in my eyes. So real superstar guys, but again, just real nice, nice men. And, um, it took a wee while before I actually got a game. Funny because Cully played his last game and I played my first in the final. So oh, this is my yeah. first cap for Wellington. We played Auckland in the final. And um, uh, he so he came off and everyone's like standing ovation. And I was running <laughs> on like, man, how good is this? You know? <laughs> Every week, five minutes, I'm going to get used to this. Um, so, yeah, that was the start of it. I think CJ was, was in the squad at the time and, and he'd been – Drop for that game. It was quite funny. Like Chris Boyd had us both in the sheds and was like, you're going to play to me? And I was like, trust me, Boydie. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, CJ's like, like, oh, man. Yeah. I've been in the squad all year. <laughs> what did he do? Um, I'm not sure. We probably got some dreads or <laughs> – <laughs> Yeah, no, he was obviously a gun, man. As yeah. a young player, he was awesome, strong, could do everything on the field. And if he could sort the hair out, man, he would uh... – <laughs> <laughs> could have, you know, could have been great. So, were you mainly a fullback back then? Did you go on nah, for Kelly at fifteen? A, I was just a wherever. I yeah. think I was midfield cover at the time, and yeah, I think it was more to give Kelly a standing ovation <laughs> than to give me a first cap. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good, man. Yeah, grateful. And then, what was the steps from there? Did you make the Hurricanes the following year? Uh, no, I didn't. I, I didn't. So I was like that. Five okay, minutes wasn't good nah, enough. I could, couldn't do it in the five. <laughs> um, yeah, just kind of, again, just keep working to get reps and kind of um, scrap for what I could. In the next couple of years, Hurricanes, that I went to New Zealand Sevens. Oh, yeah. So you're kind of in that space where you, you you got enough between uni, a scholarship, and matches, mm. you know, and it's that kind of real dig in. Are you going to get over the line and become a pro or not? Mm. So oh, New Zealand Sevens was good, loved that. Um, was that to the Commonwealth? Yeah, that was in 06, True. 05, um, was the, I was on the circuit oh, in 05, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. That was cool, we had my first sevens game at, at Wellington at Westpac. Oh, true. Packed, and we won that comp, and um, you know, I was like, man, this is awesome. Yeah. And I loved it, I read sevens suited me again, because I was probably fit enough mm-hmm. um, to keep going, and, and enjoyed Titch's coaching really hard, but yeah, I enjoyed it, and again, I would have stayed like, I'd, I'd like to stay in the sevens for a longer period, but mm. um, yeah, I think eventually started cracking to the you know, wider hurricanes, etc. So mm. that Wellington sevens was next level. Yeah, back then, eh? Yeah, I, I never um, went as a um, spectator. Oh, true. So I think my first time was when I played, but it was awesome. All right. Shame that it's gone and no more yeah. sevens in New Zealand. Real. Yeah, yeah. Is there no sevens in New Zealand? Nah, oh, gone. Wow. Not even Hamilton. It's been cut. Yeah. Oh, too many V8s. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you go to um, the wider squad over the sevens? No, was, I was, was doing both. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so so the, the, I think my first fully contracted year 06, um, and I think the wider at that time was enough, wider in NPC was enough to, you know, yeah. keep you going. And, mm. um, yeah, I went to the – wasn't playing much. I went to the Commonwealth Games in 06 uh, with a few boys who had dropped out of Super Rugby to mm. kind of boost the team and – I think they were waiting for like Doug Howlett and, and Rox and I turned up and I'm like, oh, you were here last year. You got no speed. Like, oh, yeah. Hey, guys. How was it, though? It was awesome. Like, we had a good crew, um, Liam Messam and um, Corey Jane, Orlando Sorka, I think, uh, Marcel Valance, was, oh, yeah. which he was in Was that an Aussie? Yeah, as an Aussie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was cool and a great tournament and, yeah. and to be in the village and it's – you feel like you're part of something bigger. Mm. Sometimes rugby, we can get a wee bit bubbled. And yeah. So it was cool, you know, watching the different athletes and supporting some of the others. Yeah. It was awesome. Mate, and the gold medal. Yeah, it was cool. I, I, I've lost it since, unfortunately. Um, I think I, I huckered it off, went too hard on the first <laughs> hucker, and um, it fell off, and I was just running around giving it that one and another one there, and we're huckering again, and they keep pointing at me, and I was pointing at them, but they're saying that my medal had fallen. So oh, I went and found it. Um, but again, I've lost it again. And <laughs> Another hacker. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. <laughs> could well have been. But I've never been one for, um, you know, no disrespect to awards, et cetera, but I've never really been one to, um, especially as a player, to hang awards. Because mm. Whereas now as a coach, I probably would. Mm. I'd hang a team juice because it feels like you're part of a, sometimes as a player, individual stuff is, you know, hanging that around the house and what, what's my wife hanging? Mm. Um, you know, it's, 
there's more than kind of yeah one one winner in the house. Yeah, so, yeah. But I, I wouldn't mind finding it though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's track it down. But then, um, obviously, when you go after that, you go back to the Hurricanes, and this is when you become a bit more of a regular player, a bit more of a starter. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, we had great midfielders, obviously, Snakey and Ma'a, and, and when I first joined Tana, mm. Tane Tupulotu, um, we, we had a bundle of, of midfielders. So it's funny, I started as a 10 without oh, a long you? kick. Yeah, you know, the Rugby League Park, as you know well, when that, <laughs> that northwesterly comes and... The coaches are real helpful with your kicking by like sitting in the coach's office and just watching. <laughs> Chris um, Boyd did that to me, mate, <laughs> that so, many times. Oh, yeah. So the kicking, uh, I started as a 10 and then ended up finishing as a wing. <laughs> True. Which is funny. So just because there was so much talent in the midfield. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, like we had Darren Cruding uh, there for a time. Yeah. It came Jimmy Gopperth. You know, yeah, we the midfield was stacked. CJ was at the full, at full back. So yeah, we had, we had heaps of talent at the time. So mm. just a game where I could get a game. Mm. So how did you go from this like utility guy who's playing everywhere, little bits of minutes, to becoming an All Black? Um, I, I I feel like at the time the skill set had changed for kind of midfield or wingers. The South Africans were were bombing everyone, like mm. kicking bombs, and they went away from like um, City and the ball carrying wingers, and maybe like Cux and uh, is that Guilford, CJ. Mm. The wingers who could slash middies that could do a few different things. Yeah, um, it's interesting. I don't know. So I don't. I used to drop high balls all the time. So <laughs> uh, when I caught them, I had a half decent kickback. <laughs> so that might be <laughs> might be right. Why? Oh, it's tough when they say, "Oh, we picked you for your high balls," and deep yeah. down you're like, "Mate, I'm not even good at." High I thought you're talking about the high ball kicks. <laughs> Or you want me to catch them as well? <laughs> so did you? <laughs> so did your selection come out of the blue, or like how did you find out? Uh, no, I'd, I'd been in the New Zealand like juniors or A or oh, whatever yeah, now, and yeah. I was captain of that team. Um, so you knew it was coming? No, I didn't. Um, it's funny. I, I cool story. Fiji saw John Kerr when he was coaching up Japan at the time. Oh yeah, and he just bowled me up like by the reception, and just said, "Oh, do you want to be an All Black?" And I was like, "Oh." Yeah, and he's like, do you know what you need to do to be an All Black? I was like, nah. He's like, do you know who to ring? And I was like, yeah. Anyway, um, just called, got the info, and then it, they had some injuries, so this it sounds like it's... Called who? Who do, you, who do you call? <laughs> I think it was Smithy at the time. True. But again, like, because Fozzie was our coach, um, Colin Cooper, oh, so yeah. they were already in comms around what we needed. Yeah. Um, but it's smart, you know, like if mm. you want to get a job, ask what... They want you to do in the job. Yeah, it's just interesting. I bolt me up, but but yeah, thankful for for JK to, for doing that. Mm. And then I actually joined them the next week in Wellington at camp. Oh, what a phone call! Yeah, what did you say on it? <laughs> <laughs> Give us a script. Yeah, no, nah, nah, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I just went to Wellington. They had a few concussions, and um, I th- yeah. I think they were they hadn't had many wins at the time as well, mm. but it was cool and that was super nervous, you know, rolling to camp and it's one of those ones where you're kind of like, Ooh, yeah, yeah, where right. do I sit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, is this seat at the back of the bus all good to sit here? I'm the first on, I just got here early. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe the phone call, you just. Talk to you, Ant. So no, nah, no, I, I didn't. It was, <laughs> it was mine, and I don't even think I took, spoke to Smithy like post that we, you know, would because I was I was kind of in the the group, but it was yeah, I, m- I might have gone through Fozzie or yeah. Coops, yeah. And then when you made it, um, obviously, was the expectation on you um, to do anything, bring anything to the group? Yeah, it's fair. Yeah. Well, first they told me to leave my um, vibrant five fingers. Uh, it's not a sponsor, but. I tore my um, tiny calf uh, <laughs> because I was wearing these like toe shoes. Oh yeah! In in respect to the people who wear toe shoes <laughs> and bare feet and bare feet. <laughs> anyway, tore my calf, so I, I missed the championship or the b- ability to be selected for the championship. Dray. And then a hard running Beaver Donald played twelve, um, just vicious on the down ball. Oh, that was going to be your in Hamilton. Debut start. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And then didn't start until the India tour, so I had to get right by the India tour. Uh, why were you wearing the calf shirt, the um, five? 
Oh, okay. like, I just gave all these free ones to the, the All Blacks, and I don't think the boys were keen. And I was just like, man, I'm keen. <laughs> like, six months for Christmas, wrap these under, the, you know. And But I overwore them, and then the first time I didn't wear them, bang. So, but no, the All Blacks was good. I, I got to camp. One of the things they do in the year two, you go and go and meet the coaches and talk about like your goals for the tour and their thoughts on you and why you're in the team, et cetera. And yeah. it's really funny, like sitting with Ted and um, Shag and Smithy and Ted's like, oh, you're going to be great on tour. And I was like, oh yeah, thanks, Ted. He's like, you sing, you dance, <laughs> you play the guitar. And I was like, I dance. <laughs> it's like in the Novotel, I started busting a dance on the floor in the, in the suite of, no, not the Novotel, the Heritage. <laughs> I was like, man, went back. I think CJ might have been my roomie, and he's like, "What? What'd you say?" I told him he was like cracking up, laughing. Um, guitar lessons <laughs> straight away. He would have been the worst person to get out of it too. Like every post game, he was like, "Jack, he wants to. <laughs> yeah. We got a guitar. He's gonna." And being you know like that old school environment, guitar's awesome. You yeah, sing song. Over a, an iPod any day. Yeah. Just not from me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to do it? Did no, you back it up? I reckon what? I led um, Stand By Me, which was my kind of go to. Yeah. Um, I just led it hard and then faded, you know. Yeah. yeah you've yeah. got to time it once people have had enough drinks that yeah. they're just going to roll with it. If mm. you go too early, they're kind of going to watch you a wee bit. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's timing. But you said you're, you'd dance. So would you get up and just dance in front of the group? <laughs> or. How would that work when you say you could entertain by dancing? Would the boys just watch you dance? <laughs> <laughs> nah. Nah, no. Nah. I enjoy a dancer when you go out, you know, like yeah, cut okay. a few shapes. Um, but not at the front of the team. The New Zealand 20s or 21s, I think it was, like Luke McAllister, pretty whippy with this massive dance battle at the World Cup. Oh, against, I that. can't remember who it was. Like we were, th- we were like taking on these other guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't know if it was crumping, but. <laughs> And I wouldn't want, like to see the footage. <laughs> but Pity's a good dancer. Is he? Yeah, he moves well. True. Yep. What sort of dancing do you do when you say dancing? Is it crumping or is it what sort of dancing is nah, it? Nah, nah. Salsa? Nah, just the, nah, just express yourself, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Just move with the music. Yeah, you're like... <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just try your best is what I call it. <laughs> I try to win more one Christmas and these big like uh, swing like not pulps I think they're pulps but pulps for men yeah we're in and I was trying to like um, win one I keep whacking I reckon done both my meniscus and the clapping died down I was like oh I'm not getting I'm not tucking it under enough so oh, they sort of moves yeah 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 <laughs> no nah, it's actually I don't know for, for, I went to Hamilton the the other day the um, stage show in Melbourne oh, awesome yeah. and. It's one of those things you watch it. It's a hip hop R and B stage show, and just because of with the kids as well at home, yeah. they're just dancing to everything. So yeah. I don't know. It's probably again, it's not serious, but yeah. Do you reckon you could have gone down that route as a pro dancer? A pro dancer? Uh, nah, yeah. I don't think so. Because again, it's like it's choreographer. Yeah, d- yeah. Choreography. Nah, I just want to yeah. do you. Do yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. with you. So then you get over to um, the India tour with the All Blacks. You're singing, you're dancing. How did the how did the footy go? Yeah, it was all right. We it's interesting. Like first time in it, you, you're not that brave, and you're real. You know, it's like boys here in preseason. You're super tense. You mm-hmm. don't want to make a mistake. So that's you know, I enjoyed the tour and came back to New Zealand. I actually went straight to the Japan post that tour. Why was that? Um, I at the time I think we. were coming into the 11 World Cup and like Sonny was have re-signed and Snakey Skucks Cuckers is like a probably the best midfielders we've had mm. in one period and I I was a wee bit older too and I, it took me a while to get into the All Blacks in my mind um, How old were you? I think I might have been 25 True 26. Still not that old eh? Yeah but at the, yeah. when you think of it you're yeah. kind of like um, anyway I left went to Japan and had 18 months there and I then I came back mm. and I managed to get back in the team again. And probably that second round, I felt more comfortable, mm. you know, and which just goes to show a lot of it is mental. Mm. You know, what you think of yourself in that moment. Whereas, um, yeah, post Japan, I just played freely, enjoyed it, was down at Highlanders' new club. Mm. 
and um, yeah, the, the rugby was a lot easier because I was easier on myself in mm. terms of my head game. It's a it's a massive learning. I wish I had had it earlier in my career, but um, I wouldn't change it. That you know, having always having a fight for minutes and positions, etc. I mm. didn't really have the luxury of relaxing in mm. a lot of ways. I was always trying to learn and you know, goal kicker. It's like special teams. It's like yeah, I'm on every special team. <laughs> goal kicker, guitar player, <laughs> like. <laughs> Spokesman, speech yeah. man, every sponsor's gig. <laughs> and yeah, but when I came back, yeah, I just I enjoyed the footy and, and played a lot better. Mm. So why did you go to the Landers? Obviously you're a Wellington boy, Kane's Kane's legend. Yeah, I think at the time you know, I thought about it, I was home and Jamie Joseph who coached me at Wellington and I played well for was was at the Hollanders. Yeah. And I don't I I think he was new, so he was recruiting. Oh, yeah. I was home on a break, and he just gave me the big, you know, the big pull the t-shirt down, and how you going, bro? <laughs> and when you get that one, you're like, oh, yeah. and he's like, it's in your contract now, you know, and you got to sign it now. You're like, oh, but I was home and I was keen, and yeah, um, it was good. It was it was different. It was fresh under the roof, so I really enjoyed my time down there. Um, yeah. You weren't part of that bad culture clean out at the Canes. That wasn't you. Nah, and and I wasn't part of the. <laughs> it's going to sound funny, and I wasn't part of the the Highlanders one, the <laughs> one to thirty seven or something like. <laughs> it wasn't me, man. No, nah, I I loved it down there. I, yeah. I actually, I played the Highlanders that first year, enjoyed it, and then I had a shoulder recon after the India tour the next year. Mm. And didn't play the next. I played probably three games at the end of the year of of the year where we lost a lot of games. So that was hard in a way because you're in a sling and you know it's hard to play guitar in a sling. <laughs> so I couldn't get on the field, and um, so it was it was a tough year, you yeah. know, because there was good coaches and good players, um, and we were just losing games and and that tension built. Mm. Um, and then they made a documentary about it. <laughs> I'm joking, Nussie. <laughs> See you in January, Bender. Oh, and seven. That was the year, eh? When you guys were oh and seven. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. True. And you had the stack team. You everyone everyone I've had on who's been in that year always speaks about how stacked that team was. Yeah. Everyone was coming in like yourself and just to confirm I was injured for the seven first games. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you come back? I played the last couple. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. So you're the difference. <laughs> <laughs> and so, no, I played the last couple in South Africa, yeah. And did you have kids at this stage? Was your wife moving around with you? Yeah. Yeah, we had um, two when we got to Dunedin. Oh, yeah. And then um, we got back to Japan and just started um, going for it, you know. Mm. So how many more years did you go to Japan for? Um, I reckon another six. True. So why did you leave the Landers that year? Um, again, like I'd come home for that period. Yeah, I'd been been away for two, came home for two, and then at the time, they said something like, "I was backstabbing a lot of the boys, and they wanted to." <laughs> no. Oh, jeez! I was like, "Here we go." <laughs> no, nah, um, again, I felt when I came home to start with, yeah, would have been for a short period just to have that crack and that taste of well, yeah, it's a bit of a lie now because. To have that last crack at Super, yeah. I went to Japan and then I had three years with the Rebels. So mm. I, I tried to come back to uh, the Ho- the Highlanders again, but I, I hadn't played the eighty caps that you needed to. Oh, really? Uh, Andy, I so Andy was doing Kobe and Crusaders. Oh, yeah. And what were you on? I was seventy eight, and they wouldn't really. Right. The funny thing was, I, if I had assigned the Highlanders, I would have played enough to get me over to then go back and forth. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're probably trying to set a. Some kind of rule. Mate, that yeah, is, yeah, is a joke. I think that's what it, <laughs> why they didn't let me back. <laughs> Kept it two before yours. Yeah. Mate, that's crazy. But you obviously love Japan. Yeah. Um, to, to spend that much time over there. Family loved it. Yeah. Yeah, we um, we really enjoyed it. We had a great spot where we were. We're, you know, great group of foreigners. Um, you need that, especially for, you know, the wives and partners, mm. the kids to be able to connect because you – it can be isolating in a lot of ways. If you set it up, it's the opposite. You get really connected with. I was there with Colin Burke and uh, Mike Broadhurst, Tim Nana Williams, oh, yeah. uh, Robbie Robinson. Uh, Ma came up for a stint. Uh, Roy Kenny Kenny Lowell. True. There's heaps of us. Hallie T. Paul. Um, we just had a good group that 
we like off the field we'd connect, the families all got on, and then when we got to work as a collective, we were like, man, we got to put it in here. Mm. I think sometimes in Japan can go the opposite. Some foreigners don't get on well, and um, yeah, but we loved it. You know, we loved our club there at Rico, and you know, appreciate that time. Mm. And how'd you find the footy? Yeah, it got better. Like we, when I first arrived, Stephen Larkin was there. He was still oh, a yeah. player. Um, so it was cool, you know, he was a probably you know, a bit of a revolutionary kind of guy with the Brumbies in those early mm-hmm. days, and to watch Bernie and um, to get to know him was cool. Um, I think the footy got better and better. Yeah, I still think it's getting better up there. Um, you know, s- sometimes you're like, man, what are you doing? Mm. But the first few years, you're really just ripping in. You, you know, it's, it's new, so it's fresh, and mm. um, yeah. And man, with all the ideas like you have, was it hard for you to – not try and put too much on these guys or try and change too much. Yeah. Yeah. I, more for the coaching. Yeah. Like, depending on what level of coach you've got there at the time, you, you're kind of trying to support them the best way you can. Mm. And, and I think the good ones would take on as much info as you could, um, being that you you come from Super and some guys internationals. Oh, James Haskell was there as well. Oh, yeah. Um, it, and we'd all try and chip in. Um, and sometimes it could get frustrating when I guess the coach wouldn't embrace it as much. Mm. Whereas here, like, you know, we bring in all the info and try and get the best, mm. um, as opposed to uh, I, I feel potentially at times maybe the coaches were feeling like the, the, the Japanese might think they're not doing their own thing. I'm mm. not sure, but no, you know, we loved it up there. So, did you play Landers with Haskell and then go yeah. to Japan with him? Uh, we the, the other way around. Oh, true. Japan, Japan first and then the Landers. Yeah, oh, yeah. So you must have been there uh, at that big party that time. I wasn't. Nah. Oh. No, you were the one. You and Hoon were the two who didn't go. I didn't get invited because um, <laughs> something about that. <laughs> nah, no, I wasn't at. You had a gig, gig on, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the next day, which was cool. Um, no, Haskies, he's a he's a full on dude, and yeah. um, he 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 was kind of like our stepson, almost like me, you, Dupree in Japan. Oh yeah, it's always yeah. over. <clears throat> My wife's a good cook, so he's always like, yeah, you know, um, he's got good manners, polite English boy, and yeah, yeah, it was a funny old. Funny old setup. I think Lima dunked an egg on his head, and then Kay jumped over the fire, and Adam Thompson came off the top rope. But um, Hask is good, eh? Because like the next day, we had a cordy, and he just mm. stood up and explained the whole thing. Yeah. And I think for a lot of Kiwis, I kind of like, oh well, he, he just gets it's on cool. with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to holding any kind of mm. a few boys came in and yeah, you know. But it was cool. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, really uh, enjoyed. Playing with him, he's a full-on dude. Yeah, he's got some energy, man. That guy. <laughs> um, he's just had a baby, so it'd be interesting to see if that slows him down. <laughs> Surely, yeah. Wait till he gets to six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you you mentioned at the end of your time at Japan, instead of coming back, you tried to come back to Landers, but you end up over at the Rebels. Yeah. How did yeah. that one? How did that one work out? Um, I can't even remember how. Uh, I think maybe Scott Fusola might have been there already. Oh yeah. I can't remember the initial conversations, but. Went there, Tony McGahn, awesome, like arrived. Because when I was going back and forth from Japan, like some days I'd arrive on captain's run before the kickoff of the first game and just roll out. Like I started the Landers against the Chiefs, had one captain's run. True. Um, so it shows like what pre-seasons are this. Like, <laughs> joking, right? Um, yeah, and, and the same with uh, the Rebels, just met them. Tony McGahn really enjoyed his coaching. Munster head coach, full on dude, but again, different, so... Mm. Swears every second word, but yeah. taught me plenty about footy. Ripped into there, loved Melbourne. That was different. I'd just been up there last week with the storm, and when I rolled in, I was like, man, how do we come here with three kids, mm. six suitcases, and do that back and forth three years? Yeah. I wouldn't do it again. Oh, were you moving back and forth? Yeah, just True. suitcases. Yeah. Far out. So that was kind of, we'd just bowl up, yeah. no preseason play, then leave. Um, Crazy. It was good, kept you fresh, and yeah. Melbourne's an unreal city. Tough Food. on the wife and kids, though, eh? Yeah. It, or was, it was she sweet? It, yeah, she was, yeah, I, th- I think she was. <laughs> now, we, again, um, the Melbourne part was a good break for us. We'd had a wee bit of time in Japan. Yeah. So we'd go there, the kids were at school. Yeah. Um, you, were, <laughs> I think we spent our whole wages on food, and just. but <laughs> it was a freshen up 
from yeah. Japan and probably allowed us to stay so long in Japan and mm. you get to play Super again, which is, you know, if you still feel like you can, I think you should. And with, were your kids at school age then? So yeah. they were jumping back and forth with a full Japanese Advanced school. Advanced Australia Fair, to yeah. A full Aussie school. They weren't at school in Japan. We homeschooled oh, yeah. them. Oh, okay. Um, so we try to keep them on the same curriculum because we're moving so much. Yeah. They went to school in Melbourne and, you know, like, interesting, yeah. cool. We went to Rarotonga, my wife's um, from the Cook Islands, and we got there, and my daughter was like, are we Japanese or are we Australian? I was like, <laughs> oh, man, we need to move home. <laughs> um, so it was, it was interesting, when we, you know, to bring them home. And, yeah. and since coming back home, they've just embraced, you know, New Zealand. Um, they love kapahaka. They True, love yeah. Yeah, weekend sport, all the stuff that they've potentially missed. Mm. I, I I looked at my son. I was like, "Man, I reckon this guy's six months away from just living on an iPad." Oh yeah. When we we're away, yeah. Um, although they were jujitsu, they were rock climbing, yeah, and yeah, doing yeah. heaps. <clears throat> you just he hadn't had that social stuff. Yeah. Now he's in. You know. Now he's he's mm-hmm. loving it. He's fourteen, vaping the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. <laughs> oh, and how was the how was the footy over there? How did the Aussie footy, the awesome. style of footy, yeah. compare? Good learnings. Like I, I honestly think the Aussies are tougher. Um, tougher. Yeah, I think. Well, especially the the Melbourne because we didn't have the talent, so mm. it was like Mitch Inman running hard, mm. Sean McMahon running hard, like, and potentially because we train next to the Storm, we we're trying to run harder than them. <laughs> um, but they are they're gritty and they're tough and fit. Um, so it was cool from a. Again, learning a different style of coaching and, and watching where you can push mm. um, um, push players to to get the most out of them, mm. especially in those kind of no talent areas. And um, I loved yeah, loved the footy up there. We had a we had a good good group. We were probably just missed there thereabouts um, in a lot of games, but it was become the depth in the end. Mm. And a group like that, if you lose a few in key spots, then you really start to bleed. And, mm. Whereas if you can keep your your fifteen fresh, you probably be, you go all right. Mm-hmm. Is is that what you'd say the massive difference is between the Kiwi sides and the Aussie sides? You obviously played there, you've coached both sides of the Tasman. So was that would that be the biggest difference that you've noticed? That depth, uh, depth, yep, definitely depth. Um, the other thing, you know, like in a on a play style as well. Um, mm. You know, we can we've probably got more flair and ability. To be able to play like it, they've probably changed the DNA of especially the Wallabies mm. um, of the the group. But I think we again, they're in deep down, they're still that that tough, um, you know, grindy kind of footy short passing, which has actually come back you know, mm. a lot of short passing loops, return ball stuff. But yeah, that that would definitely be a diff- big difference, and and how hard they train. Holy, maybe that's why they haven't got the depth. They just <laughs> they're all injured, trained to death. <laughs> So why did you have to retire in the end? What what was the what was the reason? Was um, it injury or just decision? No, nah, it was decision. You know, I got probably a wee bit frustrated with. I felt at the time, and and I'd felt for a while that I, th- I thought I could do more coaching, mm. uh, especially in Japan and the level I was. Um, and when you make that decision internally, I think your body starts to kind of, you know, you start going leading that way. So mm. the final contracts I was on, like player coach and then coach. Um, gigs, which allowed me to kind of, um, yeah, do, do a bit more coaching, and, and I, I like to think I'd probably help the team more, especially in those last years, than I could mm. as a player. And mm. yeah, and it's since kind of got me on the coaching. Uh, Did you always want to coach? Was that like a plan from a young age? Or no, nah, it wasn't. Um, <coughs> well, like I've always enjoyed the game, and, and probably part of not having a lot of talent is you got to understand like mm. where the shortcuts are yeah and you can do that if you study the game more so by studying the game and having a passion for that part it's you're doing that a lot as a coach anyway mm. so understanding you realize it's not for everyone like people are like man mm. no thanks yeah um but yeah i was doing that for a while so it kind of made a lot of sense to have a have a go and how have you found it obviously look at look at the success you've brought to every team you've been involved in uh, Obviously, very good at it. I've witnessed it firsthand. You're world class, but how have you found um, coaching? Uh, it's yeah, it's been challenging. I think having good people and good structures definitely help. Um, ha- what I mean by that is having kind of um, leaders and support staff that allow you to be yourself. Mm. Um, you know, from a technical perspective, you're trying to work out what your style might be. But as a person, if you if 
you allow to be who you who you are, well, you can just rip in. Mm. Um, and that's a big part from Ray um, down here. When I first met him, he was just like, oh, it's quite funny. He called and he's like, oh, it's Razor. And I was like, I've got a friend, Unary. I was like, shoot, Unary. <laughs> I was like, shoot, Race. I thought it was Ray Sarah. <laughs> he's like, no, it's Razor. I was like, <laughs> And he's like Scott Robinson. I'm like, oh, hey man, uh, who are you after? <laughs> like, I think he's like I don't yeah. know, looking for a player. I knew my playing done, days were done. He's like, oh, have you think, think you've thought about coaching? I was like, have now. And then uh, came down. But the thing with Ray's big on. Had like, you not coached before? No, I was in Japan coaching. Oh, true. Yeah, and then I done. But you Wellington. hadn't done anything here. Oh, you done Wellington? Wellington. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he, he was. Um, he just you know, like first thing talk about where I am, where I'm from, and my background and obviously the footy stuff to understand, but mm. probably um, doing a wee bit of jujitsu and, and being proud and, and my Māori tanga mm. is something that he was like, just encouraged me to, to bring that. So I think that's been awesome. I can come to meetings and just, oh, it, it doesn't feel like 2022 te reo Māori. Like mm. I'm just, just doing it as I normally would at home. Mm. And that feels really natural to me. Mm. And when I'm in that space, then I can do the learning. So I feel like I'm trying to be what I feel like a coach should be. Yeah. You know, I probably have more white hair, <laughs> clipboard glasses. <laughs> so that's been cool. Yeah. yeah. So when did, have, what, speak about your Tedo journey. Like, was that from a young age as well? And have you always spoken it? Are you fluent? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say I'm fluent enough. Um, yeah. yeah. Like, we grew up learning Te Reo Māori. We were in, um, we wasn't Kura Kaupapa at the time, but guess took a wang or an intermediate between or bilingual. Yeah, and we're great teachers and there was a good movement at the time. We're lucky as I was saying Rui and Rap uh Arania, Apirahama, um cutting Ngoropo. Um we had really good teachers, um Dean Umu that were that were all like really keen mm. and so my father hadn't learnt both my parents are Maori and but mum went to school to learn. Um my grandfather her uh, her father was an All Black halfback, and he he was Maori and was on his way to um, South Africa for the All Blacks in the fifties, and he got turned around in Sydney because um, he was Maori. True. Um, so I, I don't know whether that that spurred her to to go and learn. You know, feeling a bit gutted that mm. happened to the old man, and and, and that was nineteen fifties Maori where he wasn't speaking and and ripping pukanas and stuff mm. on the boat. Like, so it's kind of like whoa. If you think about it. Mm. I think it's like an R word, but um, so I, I don't know. We we were lucky in terms we we learnt it in Kapak and we it was just something that we always did. And um, yeah, it's it's just cool in these environments to to have um, the support to just embrace that and and do what you would you do at home anyway. Mm. No, that is cool. And, and and talk to me about your plans. Like obviously, you're into your third year here with the Crusaders, uh, Wellington coaching jobs up for grabs next year. What are you, what are you thinking? Are you looking to potentially take that, or uh, where do you see your coaching going? Yeah, oh, I, I'm really enjoying it here. Mm. Um, I love the learning. I love um, the pressure um, of, of trying to repeat and get better every day. Um, the pressure being you know, having one. To win again and go mm. better, I love that. Um, the support and the environment is, is great. Uh, again, I'm from from Wellington, mm. so I'm, my whanau's still there. We're both Potirua kids, so um, and and had success this year with Wellington. So it's a, it's a challenging one to to work out where to be. Mm. Um, you know, there's a New Zealand Maori team as well that um, I'd, I'd love to be a part of one day um, for obvious reasons. Mm. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of in making a few decisions at the moment mm. and have a good chance over Christmas to reflect on um, the year and then also plan next steps. You know, you've got to think about the big picture being, um, you know, Mita and I, she's been with, we've been together now 22 years and like that's a lot of support and mm. I need to make sure it's genuine when I talk to her, like to say, do you want me to mm. keep doing this or or do you want me to be an actor? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. You know, I can bring in more. There's two choices there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know we can make sure that we consider everything um, you know it's whānau first and making sure they're in the best position my uh, my old man um, yep he's out or he's sorry bro yeah it's good um, yeah we should make decisions 
for the best um, for our family. Yo, man. <coughs> he was a centre. He reckons. That was a big centre back in the day, he reckons. Well, that people tell me. But he's um, he's been crook for a wee while, so one of the decisions we came back to Japan was just be close to the home. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and making good decisions for our kids, like these these years and moments with grandparents mm. um, and and for us with my wife and I with our parents are, are important and we need to make sure and we have we, we definitely do spend so much time with them mm. um, so th- th- that's important as well um, but he also gets you know he knows that the, the, you know, he's not like I don't see you man mm. he's, he, he loves it that I'm down here and ripping into the footy and, mm. and, and he sees how happy I am because I love the work and um, yeah, so the next next little period will be interesting, but we'll try and make sure that um, yeah we can try and get the best of, of most of it. Thinking of um, the big picture, mm. it's definitely the hardest part about coaching for me. It's not about me. I mean, it's a, it's a fun job. I love it, love every day. But um, the other side of it, hey, eh, what your partner or um, whoever it is has to go through with looking after the rest of the family, moving around, chasing chasing the dreams and. Um, sacrificing all this stuff for you to yeah. do your job, which I know, like me personally, I did it as a player. So then to try and now do it as a coach, it yeah. seems a little bit selfish. So yeah. um, it is. I feel like it's a, a sort of a job without kids or a partner. I feel like, but if you've got that support, like you obviously do, um, must be awesome to have that backing. It is. It is. And, and as I'm saying, you need to be really considerate when we we talk about um, the future. That um, it's not like. I'm doing rugby 100%, mm. and then let's make some decisions. It's like if if we're going to do something else, we'll do it. Um, we'll make sure that it's we you know we're genuine, we're going to love it. Mm. Um, but as I said, making sure it's it's not that rugby is trumping everything. Yeah, again, kind of thing. And then obviously, kids and and I get frustrated when I bring the whistle home and just start demanding, <laughs> you know, <laughs> demanding things around the house, the lawns, and the washing, and that. So. Um, it's just a habit, you know. Yeah, you're forever on the whistle. <laughs> if you weren't um, coaching, what would you be doing? You reckon? Um, I'd be co- coaching some, um, you know, probably in, in Te Ao Māori space, oh, yeah. health, fitness, um, how order, mm. um, in some form. It's a passion anyway. I get to do it with my daily job, and I learn plenty to then do it outside of footy. Mm. Yeah, and I. Again, it's from where I've been brought up, and um, I, I just feel in, in rugby and professional environments, there's so much good stuff that you, you can kind of share it twice mm. in here, and then you're you're out there in the community sharing it. Because mm. if you if you don't get into these places for whatever reason, um, it doesn't mean you you should have to miss out. So, mm. like, yeah, if I was in footy, I'd be in still in some form of coaching, leadership, and sharing. Um, it's what I'm passionate about. So. Mm. Mate, love it. Well, as always, we have gone to our um, Instagram for some questions, and um, the lad you are, you've had plenty come in, and I, I sort of missed it during the um, as we we're going through it. But the most of the questions were about this magical moment, um, Highlanders versus the Crusaders. Um, I think you're at thirteen. At some magical offload. Some people call it the greatest pass <laughs> in Super Rugby history. Talk me <laughs> yeah. through it. Yeah. Um... I think uh, I was. I was probably the last couple of games of the season, and um, was this that year that the Owen seven year? I, I can't remember. It yeah. might have been. Oh, it yeah. it might have been because I was like I was playing with one arm, you know. Um, so I had a shoulder recon, and Jamie oh, brought true. me back early. So um, that's the first part. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the Jamar brace, <laughs> um, and then when I um, pushed Ryan Crotty off, um, the All Blacks. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> no, it was just. I think by the end of my career, like you do that at touch and you yeah. go around the back or over the top, whatever. And um, it's a good learning point as well that you can do things on the field, you know, as long as you practice it and you know what you're doing. Yeah. And I just, I've always thought like if you bring the ball to the line that way, they can get in between the path. Mm. Whereas if you put it around your back, if you're accurate enough, you can dig in and force that guy to turn. So, mm. yeah. It was more, yeah, <laughs> it was more just, yeah, going for it really. Yeah. And, I would say the same thing to kids now. Like if you have that skill and, and you're getting reps on it, you know, pull it out because, yeah. yeah, so. How come we didn't see more of it? 
Well, as I said, like the start of my career, man, I was yeah. – you're not getting on the field for five minutes <laughs> and going around the back like that. <laughs> you're going to be back at club rugby real quick. And you get on for five minutes, man, you talk, make your tackles, <laughs> don't give any penalties, and the next week you get seven minutes. <laughs> that's why it didn't happen earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Okay, next one. Ask him about the story of how he tackled Richie McCaw at training. <laughs> oh. That's for you. Yeah, that'd be from CJ probably. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell it. Like we had this live kind of clean out drill. Yeah. And um, yeah, this is this is probably more, what is it, Grav McGrath than Jiu Jitsu. But like he was over the ball yeah. and I kind of came on an angle and tried to just get like get a double um, back leg or just tip him. Yeah. And uh, I got him somewhere else, and he just, like, he felt it and pretty much popped straight off. Um, <laughs> Wait, got his nuts? Nah. <laughs> nah, accidentally, uh, one, as my hand was going around to get his back, it's like a quick jab, and he just like, spooked him like a cat on the roof. <laughs> I haven't actually taught that. So where did you get him? <laughs> Up there. <laughs> where was it? I'll leave that to the imagination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I haven't brought that clean out technique in yet. <laughs> the <laughs> coaching starts going south, man. I'll be bringing those ones in for cat on the roof clean out. Oh, no wonder um, when he was on the other day, <laughs> you were way down the back. <laughs> he could look me in the eye. <laughs> Sorry, Richie. <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay. Next one. Why did he hang upside down on his bunk bed? Oh, man. Is this, uh, this is from my brother? <laughs> yeah. I can't explain that one because uh, he, this is my brother Jacob, he was doing it first and uh, people thought we were twins when we were younger because um, he was the same size. Yeah. And Dad like, used to just give us the number one haircut like all the time. Yeah. Um, so no, he uh, he invented it, the, the upside down hang, and I, f- I just yeah, followed his lead. So. <laughs> what did it do? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just good for your strength. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's a good question, Jake. Thanks, man. <laughs> okay, See you at Christmas. <laughs> I don't quite get it, but um, next one. Does he still use orange zest spritz as his facial routine, and is that why he's aged so well? That's Dwayne Sweeney. Yeah, it is. Does he still good. eat two Snickers bars a week? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, oh, man, I gave up on the orange spritz. I had probably the worst game of rugby ever. I played first five for New Zealand Māori. And was goal kicking. Dan Cipriani was the opposition ten, and I was just spraying them. I'd hate oh, to see true. the stats. It's probably one from seven. We lost the game, and um, <laughs> <laughs> I gave up the orange spritz. So what was that? It was what like is a orange vitamin spritz? C oh, yeah. face spray? Like I was just being real super healthy that year. Oh, I'd been yeah. um, to these coaching courses, and I was using everything in that like under the sun, yeah, including the spritz. And then I had a shocking game, and. You haven't used it since then. <laughs> you have aged quite well, though. Do you put it down to your, what, facial routines or? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> I can't hear. Can't answer that. <laughs> but I did see Big B to Mighty Williams. I reckon he's dying his hair early. Oh, true. Oh, sorry, B. Mate, um, that's throwing him under the bus. I'm just thinking, he, yeah, it might just be, um, might just be Jet Black. <laughs> I went great pretty early Yes, yeah, so did I I always wear a hat <laughs> But you're someone From memory This is just a story That I heard Someone who always spent A lot of money Or you invested in yourself As a rugby player Yeah like When you reflect back on it It, it actually makes a lot of sense mm. Because um, You know If you get one more year Out of it And depending You know Like the, the back end of your season Especially if you're overseas It's going to pay itself off mm. Um so making sure you're you're trying to get the best out of your career because with footy it, it is it, go, it comes and goes really fast. Mm. So getting the, some support and, and yeah, it's been great uh, for, for a lot of reasons. Um, still catch up with a lot of those guys and still use a lot of the the techniques um, that I was taught back back then, and it's been well worth the investment, mm, mate. Because uh, it makes so much sense. You said all the time these young kids just expect everything to be put on a plate, but um, the biggest investment as a professional rugby player is obviously yourself. So, whatever you need to do, whether it's all those little things, what what little things were you doing? Like, 
Give us an example of some of those. So some of them were like courses outside of footy, like going away, like a two day course around like peak performance and and learning some strat. I remember coming back from them, and you're just like you're on cloud nine, and yeah, you're at work scrubbing the toilet. (laughs) Actual, (laughs) you you know, like you're buying people lunch and just loving life, and Mm. but it's a really reflecting back being able to be right in that moment and, and um, giving everything to that moment because of this mm. you know I remember we're testing um, like phosphate decrement and stuff post would have been the same week after I've just come off this course and I was just loving it like mm. oh man how good's testing <laughs> we get to know where we are and yeah. if we're not where we need to be like we get a marker you know yeah we could have avoided this and everyone's like bro shut up <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get rid they of bring them. your positive. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I was um but it's again it's well worth it and to realise that that's a mindset as well. Mm. You can get to that place. Um it's not for everyone, but um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I definitely enjoyed it, mm-hmm. sure. And especially with around goal setting, if you can get, you know, set goals when you're in that place, you'll be surprised at you know what you'll reach for. Mm. Um so I, I yeah, I'd definitely recommend working on your mental game. Mm. You know, you think of it, how much of it we do um, deliberately is, is not a major part compared to everything else. Mm. Yet, if you get that part right, it can make a massive difference. 100%. Like that. Took a bit of a detour off the um, orange zest, but hell of an answer. Um, next one. Oh, you'll know who this one came from. I heard he can belt out Lady in Red. Can he give us a rendition? Lady in Red. That's a good song. I can't. I, I wouldn't do it justice, although this is a good setup. Yeah, you mic. sound good, eh? Um, I reckon if you're going to hit it, it's going to be on this. Lead. Nah, it's oh. not even just there. Yeah. I almost missed that again. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I need to get back to singing, though. Could you give us a little Stand By Me or something? <clears throat> when the night <laughs> well, that's how it went that's how they had to because I was like when the night and then when it came on the computer it was like when the night I was like Ooh, stronger than I thought has come <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So man they, I was expecting you to ease into it I nah, see what you nah. mean how you go hard but yeah. that was probably the best Couple, two seconds yeah, yeah. of singing I've heard win the first steps and win the start yeah and then um, and then pray that people jump in <laughs> Mate, I sort of I felt like I jumped in, in shock or yeah. amazement. But yeah, yeah. Do you want to go again and do the whole thing? Or? No, I can't. no, that like, was good. Yeah, mate. that's just snippet. Eh? Yeah, a teaser. Yeah, <laughs> got, to, got to pay for the concert. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next one. Um, who's got to be the bad man? So this doesn't make much sense to me, but hopefully it does to you. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to work out where this is from. It's uh, yeah, I like it. Somebody's got to be the bad guy, I think. Mm. Yeah, one of the uh, – what's the movie? Is it um drug movie? Oh, so many. Yeah, yeah. Um, bu- 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 machine gun. Oh. But, I, yeah, it's a cool line because it's like sometimes – and what the person's saying by being the bad man is he's being disruptive, you know, mm. like – but he's doing it for a reason. And someone's got to do it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes standing around going – it's a person who's like, at least they do it all the time, and they're mm. just going, like, oh, i going again. <laughs> Whereas, yeah, somebody's got to be the back. So is that sort of a quote that you live your life by? No, nah, it's not, no. not at all. Um, <laughs> I'm the one saying, hey, somebody's got to be the bad guy here. It's not going to be me. <laughs> nah, but sometimes, yeah. Uh, yeah. More and more, I think, um, in 2022, like, I want to get like real deep into freedom of speech, et cetera. Mm. But get in there. Yeah, yeah, especially if it's for, if the intent is pure, you know, mm. like the reason you're doing it is this, because that can, you know, as it like now gets sound bites and headlines get it held and then they're mm. gone and mm. it can turn into anything. So people don't say anything, but is it repressed? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's got to be the bad guy. Like it. Okay. Next one. Hardest player you had to tackle? Tamana Tahu in the league. Yeah. Year? Yeah. Yeah, he played. Um, we played New Zealand. A played Wallabies. Yeah, and he was midfielder then. True. Um, super strong. Yeah, and he's a bit like Rene Ranger, 
Like Rangers, yeah. he doesn't look that big. No. Um, yeah, rock. But he is like – and then I remember reading like a when someone went back to uh, the league, mm. read a magazine, it was like the strongest guys in the NRL oh, in the yeah. gym. Oh, yeah. And he was like power cleaning 120. Oh, it's like, man – Wonder why is <laughs> I was trying to show that to him. Yeah. Bring up um, Chris Boyd. Yeah, Boyd, he just got an article here. Remember in 08 when Tamana Tahu um, run through me all the time? Mate, you answered that so quick. Yeah, I yeah. didn't even have to think about it. Obviously, there's memories in there. Yeah. 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 We've all got one. Yep. Okay, best midfielder you had you got to play with? Oh, hard question. Uh, yeah, you played with all of them. Oh, I would have to say Ma'a. Mm. Yeah. Like Snakey, obviously, very um, close. Snakey, for different reasons. Yeah. I think um, just the growth in Ma'a's game, though, like there's a, there's a lot of midfielders that have that power play style, but not many evolve to have a long pass, long kick, decision-making mm. at the highest level. Like he's not doing this just in super. He's doing it in test matches big, long um, kicking game. So I think the evolution of Ma'am and where he finished um, to where he started was, was yeah, Ma. I'm at 12, you're at 13. Is that the dream combo? Um, depends what years, because the or early years 10. you wouldn't get the ball. <laughs> like early days, you just have to clean the ruck. Um, maybe 15, because he loved them, cut out pass. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hit too early, yeah. 15 on the bounce. You better catch it too. <laughs> Good to catch it. Okay, last question. Ask everyone this one, but best piece of advice you have for a water lad listener? Um, I think the best piece of advice is um, to know yourself mm. uh, and then to be yourself. So, you know, know what you stand for, know what's what's true for you and and your, you know, your whānau and, and whatever is in your heart and then just be it. Mm. Um, not trying to be anyone else's whatever, um, but take time to reflect on what's important to you because, you know, when we I get a lot of time here at the uh, Cranford Oak Motel, <laughs> one <laughs> hundred and seventeen a night, free Milo. You get a lot of time to um, you know, reflect and yeah. and think about it. So it's important when we're working. You're so much in it mm. in the work. Take time to reflect and. And um, check in on what's important to you because that also changes. You know, that changes over time. Mm. So continuing to understand yourself. And then once you do, then just then just go and be it because um, if you're trying to be something else for someone else, it, I don't, uh, it's never sustainable. Mm. Um, yeah. Mate, oh, I knew it was going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> the best yet. <laughs> Love that advice. And uh, what a podcast, obviously. Yeah. Um, I love to save some of the best guests I can get for the last of the season and uh, well and truly delivered. Heard a lot of good things about you before um, getting to meet you this year, but um, been blown away with what a lad you are. Um, looking forward to working with you this year and learnt a lot off you already. So I'm excited for the year ahead with you, but um, appreciate you coming on the podcast and giving up your time, mate. Awesome. Cheers, Jimmy. Thanks a lot, man. You're a lad. What a lad, what a lad. Oh, 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 oh,